phone and I don't know if you guys done clicked off already <laughs> so I don't know if I should make this a separate video but since somebody sent me an email it wasn't meant for a conversation or anything like that so she was just telling me you know how she appreciates the channel and appreciates my honesty and sharing my trials and tribulations and she was saying um how she has been through some stuff she had to she experienced some stuff when she was younger you know not great things when she was a little girl and and she feels as though that she in, in other words she feels as though she's damaged for lack of a better word okay or she you know you go through life experiences and sometimes they hit people in different ways and sometimes it's hard to crawl out of that hole i get it but my thing is when you go through so many different things in life this is for me i'm speaking for me not her and I feel as though everything I've been through, the good, the bad, the ugly, it has been for a purpose. And I feel as though I want to use my stories to give other people hope. So I was like, okay, so I've been through so much. I've lost everyone in my family. I've been surrounded by drugs and this and this and that and so many other things. But I'm not going to let that stop me. I'm not going to let it paralyze me. From moving forward and that's why I'm at an age now with the watch I don't know if you guys heard the story about the watch I haven't wanted to watch in over 30 years so I want to let go of that and move on with my life I don't want that to hold me anymore I love my mom I, I stopped wearing a watch if you don't know I stopped wearing a watch um, when my mom passed away because it was like time stopped because I just loved her to pieces and now it's time to let that go because honey i will ask a student in the class what time is it so quick or i'll be looking for my phone for the time what time is this class so for how many more minutes we have please somebody tell me what time is it oh my god they was like well what is that black thing on your wrist miss bad i'm like it's a bracelet it's a bracelet it's not a watch what is the time how many more let me know when i have five minutes left so i can start to wind it down <laughs> so you know so I think it's time that you know I let it go and moved on it's also there was also a time where I had to forgive my father because I felt as though he killed my mother so I had to but I'm harboring all that anger and that resentment and that hate in my heart and that takes a lot of work and like I said I'm always on a path to becoming a better person so i this was years ago i let this go years ago years after my father's death i was so angry but i'm carrying around that weight i'm carrying around that anger and that pain and like oh for what he's gone <laughs> so and i knew deep down inside i knew that he didn't mean to do whatever he did to her I know he didn't. He loved her in his own way and she loved him and ooh, I, I didn't understand it, but she did. So I had to let go and I had to forgive him. But ironically, I feel myself back there and I'm working on healing myself where I have so much anger and, and I'm not gonna say hate towards someone, but I'm working through it myself to let that go because that's not how I wanna live my life. And that, like, I, I don't think I could ever forgive that person. I don't know. But I, I'm working through that anger and that, I don't want to say hate. I don't want to say hate because that's, that's, that's a tough word. But I'll never, I don't want to say never forgive them either. But those feelings, are they're there. However I want to say it. You know, they're there. So I'm like, here we go again. You know, that other people are walking around not even feeling any of that. So it's like, okay, Joy, I need to let that go because I'm the only silly one feeling that way. But it's a process and it's going to take me time. So, <laughs> but I'm working to becoming spiritually free of anger, pain, sadness. I'm working towards that. And I think I veered off topic a little, but you you know what I'm saying. But when you go through something in life 
and whether it's cancer, whether it's sickness, and what are you going to do with your story? Are you just going to let your story paralyze you and you just wallow in misery and you just don't do anything? What kind of quality of life is that? For example, there's a child, y'all know I'll talk to y'all to death. There's another lady. <clears throat> oh my gosh. I don't remember her name. And her daughter had cancer. Um, beautiful little girl. And she may have passed when she was 13 or 12 or something like that. And she fought a good, good fight, this little girl. And the mother, of course she grieved for her daughter. But she took her daughter's camp. I got chills. Mm, makes me want to cry. She took her daughter's fight. And the daughter maintained a great spirit throughout her journey. She took her fight. She took her cancer. She, the mother. And she took the loss of her daughter and turned it around into something positive. She then became an advocate of other parents whose children were in a hospital fighting cancer. She would help with parking passes because when you go to um, the medical, the, the hospital downtown, <clears throat> Texas Memorial Home, whatever it is downtown, you leave the parking. When you go back, you got to pay for parking. So if you're there in a hospital nonstop, you in and out that adds up that adds. so she did something she started foundations so it's, it's easy to take your hardship whether you've been um molested you've been raped you've been you've lost a loved one to the crime or anything you can't if you can some people can't <clears throat> but you can take that negative energy that negative force and then turn it into a positive to help other people so and People always say, why do you tell your stories? Why do you tell your business? There's some things you shouldn't say. This is going to sound weird. And I have said this before. But I feel like, oh, I don't know why I'm getting emotional. But I feel like I can't help myself. <laughs> I feel like it's something that I'm supposed to be doing. I'm like, look, I'm tired of the hardships, honey. Can my sister get a break? But I feel as though everything I've been through has been for a reason. And if I know my stories of me overcoming certain things and so on and so forth, and my story can give hope to someone else, who am I to not share rising like a phoenix? Who am I to keep those stories to myself? Who am I not to tell how I overcame something or how I, or how I never gave up? <clears throat> you know, I'm still struggling horribly, horribly financially. Bad. But I'm not going to give up. You know, I was going through something recently. And I was telling Sydney, she was like, oh, well, my water done drained out of this thing i don't know why and my daughter was like oh well mom at least you're not giving up at least you're trying and i said that's right i'll never stop trying especially when i know i have three kids three adults to feed i'm still gonna do the little bit that i can yeah and it seems like i just can't crawl out of the financial hole <laughs> it's all it seems like there's something always popping up <laughs> i'm like dear god but I'm not gonna sit down, sit there and cry. So I'm like, Ooh, what am I gonna do? <sighs> you know, and then sometimes I'm like, whatever's gonna happen, we'll get through it. We'll make it to next payday. We're, we're gonna get through it. We'll overcome this as well. So you just can't give up. You just can't lose hope when the going gets tough. You gotta keep fighting. And you have to take that negative experience, that hard experience, and you have to find a way. Maybe after you heal and you come to terms with it and you go through the process of the healing process, you gotta use it, in my opinion, as a positive thing. There's some women who have been raped and then they become, turn around and then become counselors. There are some people who used to be addicted to drugs and then they then become an advocate and a sponsor for someone else or alcohol and they overcame that. Everyone has a story. Someone was homeless. Look at, for goodness sakes, look at Tyler Perry. Homeless. 
sleeping in his car. And he took that negative and never gave up and kept going and kept going. I've taken, I haven't, I haven't reached the mountaintop to some, maybe I have, cause I'm not six feet under and I'm still here. I'm just gonna keep fighting. I'm not gonna, get, I'm not gonna give up. And for the person who sent me that, you have to, you, or you, or you, or you, whoever you are, you have to find your joy. You have to find a way to take your hardship and turn it around and you fight. There's no sitting there paralyzed, afraid of fear. You have to face fear in the face. And you have to fight. You might get knocked back down. I, I, I'm always not for some reason. I'm always knocked back down. But I keep getting my butt back up. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'll separate this into two videos. <laughs> but I always get back up. I get knocked down all the time. I get slapped in the face by life all the time. You know, people disappoint me. I disappoint people. You know, I'm not I'm not um immune from making mistakes and not being the best person that I can be. But like I said before, I every day am looking for a way to be a better person. You know, but I do feel like I am a guiding light in a certain way. And I feel as though I can't help it. I feel like I've been ordained to tell my stories, to give kindness and show kindness to people. <sighs> yeah, but I do have my moments <laughs> when I be upset with the kids. You know, that's normal stuff. And I, like I said before, I'm working progress. I am not perfect. But I'm always reflecting and trying to think how I can become a better person. And I am working on um, eradicating that hatred that's living in my heart. And I don't know about forgiveness. I don't know. <laughs> but that's something that I have to work out. That's a personal thing that I have to work out. Because, honey, you be in your feelings and upset about something and the other person living their life, child, ain't even thinking about you at all. Not thinking twice about you, your tail, honey. But you sitting around, <laughs> still sitting with your arms folded, <laughs> upset and mad. <laughs> Gotta let it go, boo. I'm work in progress. I'm not perfect. I'm gonna get there, though. I'm gonna get, <laughs> I'm gonna get there. So, with that said... I hope that this conversation has lifted someone's spirit or given someone a glimmer of hope, maybe a little bit of peace, but you have to take what happened to you has happened to you. It is what it is. Can we go back and change it? No. But can we do something for the future or going forward? Yes, we can. Because the only person that controls you is you. If you're in a relationship and you are miserable or you being abused, there are so many services out there for women, honey. And trust me, I started over with nothing. Zero. You may have to lean on a few people to help you out, but no. There's no need for you to live your life and you that miserable in a relationship or with someone who's mistreating you. Mm -mm. No, I don't believe in that at all. So, no, there's, you always have a choice. And I always say in my relate, oh, I, I talk to y'all, it's up, y'all. And I always say in my last marriage, not my last relationship, my last marriage. <clears throat> um, sometimes I, I, I play that mind game, and I feel as though it, it was my fault too, because I had a choice and I stayed. Because I feel like we're gonna go with three little kids, you know, blah blah blah. But we all have choices, and when you're ready to make that choice, you'll know. You'll know. Maybe you need to get it bopped upside your head. <laughs> That's what happened to me, child. Then the choice was made for me. I knew I wasn't going back then. <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't, maybe I'm not making any sense. But don't let fear paralyze you. Mm -mm. There's sometimes I'm, I'm scared of something. And my heart is racing. And I'm stressed out. And I just feel like I'm just going to do it. 
Like when I talk about leaving the country, I asked Sydney if she wanted to go for her last two years, you know, we could travel abroad and maybe homeschool her, get homeschooled or go to a school in another country. She's like, no, I don't leave my friends. But let me tell you something, her friends and her other family members ready to get up and go, the friends are gone, but you want to stay behind for your friend. I don't know. That's a whole other topic, whatever. She says no, and I respect that. She says she didn't want to go, and I'm going to respect that. So I have two years. I'm waiting. I'm scared, but I'm going to do it. Ciao. So next year, I'll start working on my visa, start working on my applications, because the application process can be lengthy. I want to work on some certifications. So I have my goals in place. And that's and this is another reason why I be pushing Clinton. Dude, you gotta you gotta you gotta go. Two years, I'm out of here. I'm not babysitting. No, you gotta go, buddy. You gotta go, gotta go, buddy. You gotta go, buddy. Ah, uh -huh. gotta go, buddy. <laughs> because I'm going, buddy. I'm going to see the world, something I've never seen before. Nope, I grew up in Brooklyn, stayed on the block, played on the block, played. You know, outside with my friends, didn't really leave the block. Once in a blue moon, my mom would send me to Maryland to um, to my aunt and my cousins. And then, you know, over the years, lost touch with them. So I haven't seen, I could probably count the places on one hand that I've been. So I want to experience the world before it's too late. Like, so there are things I want to see, but I'm not going to let fear of even doing those things by myself. I'm not going to let it stop me. I'm just going to do it. Even what I plan to do next year as far as a career, I don't know. I'm just going to do it. I don't want to talk about that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. I'm just going to do it. I'm scared, but I'll figure it out. And I, but I really enjoyed this. I would get the um, sriracha chicken again. I don't know what I was thinking. Try and make five packs. Crazy. But I will be eating this tomorrow. It was pretty good. It wasn't bad at all. So with that said, thank you guys for hanging out with me and listening to me run my mouth. And I hope that once again that I've lightened your spirit, taken some of the weight off of your heart, your mind lifted um, a little bit of the burden that you feel as though you're carrying. We all have choices in life and it's up to you to make those choices. And sometimes no one else can make them for you besides you. With that said, I love you and thank you for hanging out with me, believing in me, um, all your positivity and stuff. And I do appreciate it. And I'm always on a quest to become a better person. Like I say, I'm not perfect, but I always reflect and I always want to be better and do better. I don't know, because none of us are perfect. So with that said, um, thank you. And I will see you later. I love you. I love you until next time. Later.